תקשיבו. תקשיבו, שווין קלין, so wild. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, good afternoon. I appreciate you joining us for the session right now. Um, I'm happy to welcome Yusuf Chowdhury. Uh, I've known Yusuf for uh, probably more than eight years, I think, at this point, back in the day from our time together at Geekdom. Uh, Yusuf, if you haven't met him before, is all things digital, uh, an SEO expert, uh, digital marketing. He's also uh, the owner of online business owners. Uh, which is a consultancy uh, group that he operates. Um, he's probably the friendliest, most energetic, uh, knowledgeable person that I could ever ask to have with us today. Uh, and today our focus is going to be a little bit about um, optimizing uh, your online presence, but through the lens of Google. Um, but realistically, Yusuf could probably talk forever about anything online. So I'm <laughs> happy to have you here, Yusuf. Thank you so Thank much. You. I appreciate you, uh, and uh, thank you again. Anytime. You're, well, you're most welcome. All right, so first of all, I did share the uh, copy of the presentation on the comment section. So if you all want to download it, feel free to do so. And let me go ahead and share the screen right now and then see if this thing works. Okay. And it says there's an issue. Let's see, what is the issue here? Uh, A second, he's asking me to make some changes on the system preference. Oh my God, there we go. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta be patient with the technology right now. Let's see. Yes, one. Okay, there we go. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, let me share again. Give me a second. There we go. See? That's what I'm talking about, fixing things on the go real fast. All right, folks. So if you all can see this, just uh, you know, say something in the comment section if you all can see this or somebody can holler at me. I can see the presentation. You can see it. Beautiful. Okay, so as you can see from the title, uh, what I'm gonna do, uh, first of all, this, uh, this is my cell phone number, you know, 210-316-3123. Feel free to call me anytime except after midnight, even though I'll probably be awake, but I'm not gonna answer, okay, on purpose, <laughs> all right? Text me uh, messages or connect with me on the social, just look up for my name and connect, connect with me on the social media so I can help you out with any kind of question you might have, okay? I also have a meetup that I've been running it since 2012. And this is how I also met my good friend, Ryan. We communicated and we did a lot of stuff for small businesses and startup communities. So uh, since this session is gonna be a little bit long, but I'm gonna do my best to finish it within an hour. But I do want to also talk about, talk about the importance of the SEO before we jump into the main topic, which is the Google My Business page, okay? so. The, the subject we're, we're gonna cover today, you know, what is SEO? What's the difference between the on-page and the off-page? And how the local search engine, which is the Google My Business page, is actually one of the element. It is not the main task or is not the main thing when it comes to online presence. That is not the only thing that you need to focus on. But for now, for a lot of small businesses, that should be the first step to kind of take care of it before you look into like, you know, uh, website optimization, other crazy stuff on the back, end, like, you know, with social, with ads and whatnot. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. And of course, how can you prepare in order for you to set up the Google My Business page? If you already have it, great. We can talk about how you can improve it to get more eyeballs. If you don't, I'm going to kind of go quickly uh, to talk about how to set it up. Okay. So, so that is a thing. So let's go ahead and jump into that. And if you all have any questions while I'm talking, feel free to put your questions on the comment section. We'll definitely go back and uh, respond to all your concerns. Okay. All right. I heard something. What was that? <laughs> all right. So, so the first thing is, you know, what the heck is SEO? Okay. And it's the funny thing about this, because even in 2021, I would say like maybe eight out of 10 still don't understand the concept of how, of how a search engine works, right? 
So I'm going to try to go through that real quick, then we can jump into the, the main topic, right? So when it comes to the, the, the core idea behind the search engine or the SEO, so the way you have to define it or the way I defined it, so it is a technical process, right? There's a technical process and there's also a creative process. So the technical process happens at the back end of your website. So this is like not just a keyword because I know everyone's going to say keyword, but that's not the only thing. You have like the coding system, you have a script, you have the, the way how the website is structured from the back end, right? That's, that's what we call it creative, I'm sorry, technical. When it comes to the creative process, that is the front end of the site, the look, the design, the message, uh, the, the, the theme, and how are you uh, converting the website visitor into somebody that can give you a phone call or submit, you know, so these are the creative process where you can involve copy, text, messages, content, and visuals. Okay, so it goes both in uh, it's called, it goes both hands, technical and creative. Both both are very important. And the whole objective of the SEO is what is to influence the visibility of your website on the search engine's organic result, which is what Google. So when we say search engine, we're talking about Google and Bing and Yahoo. That's the search engine. Sometimes people say. What about Pinterest SEO? What about Twitter SEO? That language doesn't make any sense to me because when we say SEO, we're talking about the search engine software, which is the Google and the Bing and the Yahoo and so forth. But the social media, that's a different platform. That's a whole different system, you know, has its own, I don't call it search for that because that's a totally different thing. So don't confuse between the two, okay? When we say SEO, we're talking about the Google and the Bing and the Yahoo, okay? And the whole objective of, of the SEO is to influence the visibility of your website so your target audience can find you, right? So your target audience can actually take an action, correct? So that, that's how you have to think. If I'm gonna think about SEO, I'm thinking about, first I need to do market research, understand who are my audience. When they come to my website, what are they going to do? Am I going to tell them to make a call? Am I going to tell them submit a name and email address or phone number for like a, a form or follow up and whatnot? Does that make sense? Oh, that makes sense, okay? So that's in a, in a nutshell, that's what SEO would stand for, not selling enormous octopus, right? So, so now, according to Google, how does Google define it? So this is how Google define it because we have to understand from the Google's perspective, right? So when we strategize, when we do the marketing, we gotta follow in the same flow, right? So here Google says to make it easier, make what easier? The website, so they're talking about the website, making your website easier, for the search engine, which is for Google to crawl, to index, because they have a software called Spider or Google Bot, whatever, right? So what it does, it crawls, it indexes information. It tries to understand the content within your website, okay? So if your content talks about specific service, a specific business to a human being, the search engine wants to understand that. Why? Because it will take all this information and it will index it on the index server. So when you're looking for it, it will give you that result, okay? So that's what Google says, you should base your optimization, which means the SEO optimization of the pages, right? Foremost on what your target audience are behaving on the site, okay? So that's a definition. So if you understand this concept, that means when you build a site, you're not gonna look for the look. You're not gonna look for, oh, I want it to look fancy. I'm like, fancy? What the heck does that mean, right? That's like, could mean anything to anybody, right? So you have to think from a, the consumer point of view, like, okay, what, what are they going to do? But I also want to tell them what they need to do. Make sense? So when you build a site, think from that perspective. I have a business, I have a product. I want the customer to come to the website and take some action, whether it's to meet up with me, set up an appointment, make a phone call, whatever you want them to do, right? That should be the main focus before like going into like, you know, the cosmetic of things, right? Because, you know, a lot, let's be honest, a lot of consumers are not, you know, great artists. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so that's, the, that's the whole definition of within uh, Google. Now, so we de define what SEO is, right? We understood what Google wants you to understand when it comes to SEO. And now there's a difference. There's something called on-page SEO and off-page, okay? So the on-page mainly it's, again, deals with the back end of your website and the front end. When it comes to the back end, what is the header? What is the tag? What is the title? What is the content for that particular pages? What the content talks about? Alternative tag or alt text. These images that you're uploading, 
Are you giving it some sort of information so you can have the search engine understand what these images are about? Because the Google bot cannot read images, right? At the same time, people are blind and yes, they do check the internet, believe it or not. They need to understand what these images are about because they have a software that explains to them, right? What is the meta description? What is the keyword within the content? Do you have a link that points to different pages based on what the customer looking for, okay? So that is an on-page SEO. It is done on the website only once after the research, unless if you do uh, consistent updated content like Google, like Google uh, I'm sorry, like uh, blogging material, then you have to optimize it every time you blog, okay? And this can be only done once, except when you post content on a consistent basis, you have to optimize it every single time. Now, when it comes to off-page SEO, that means there are other ways of basically creating a presence for your website through getting link from other relevant sites or having your website submitted to other directory sites, social media sites, ebook sites, video sites, podcasts, and whatnot, any relevant sites that can bring traffic back to your website, that is in itself is a signal. But this task of off-page SEO, it is a monthly task. It's not something like you do it only once. Just like in social media, you have to like constantly uh, write content outside the website, do some sort of directory submission. You also have to do like a health check of any type of spam link hitting back to your website so you can clean them up. So there's a lot of work ha happens behind the uh, outside the website. Okay, uh, with my company, with my team, we usually spend anywhere between 27 to like 55 hours per month per website of our client. That's, that's how much work it involves, okay? I still just want you to understand the whole concept of SEO because we haven't gone to the main topic yet, okay? So that's what off-page SEO is. And one of the off-page SEO element or technique, it is the Google listing or the local listing. Okay, so when you do the local listing, of course, the reason uh, Lunch to say came up with this uh, important subject because Google mainly dominates the search market anyway, almost like more than 85%, everyone just know what Google is, right? So I'm gonna talk about a little bit that Google My Business page is not the only one, even though it's the most important one, right? But there are others that you can kind of utilize it to get the best benefit for your business in terms of getting customers from these places like Yelp and Super Pages and, and whatnot, okay? So understand that the Google My Business page or the Google listing, sometimes we call this local SEO or local listing, it's just one of the, one of the element of the search engine optimization technique, but it is not the full, okay? Because in SEO, there are 100 ways of doing things, and this is just one of them, right? So you can see right here some of the most popular listing sites like Bing, City Search, of course, Google, Super Pages and whatnot. So I'm gonna show you there are a couple of tools out there. Some of them are free, some of them are paid. This is just, again, in the future, if you increase more local visibility and more customer base to kind of find you because the idea behind the uh, Google listing or the local SEO, it is a geolocation based uh, system. So that means whatever you're surrounded, whichever area you're in, like 40 mile radius from that area, you're gonna basically be found based on the customer that are looking for you, okay? Now, so some of the tools out there like Yext, uh, Local IQ, SEMrush or Moz, uh, a lot of these you have to pay a lot of money for it. But if you go to Moz, uh, the cool thing about Moz, and I have a link right here. So in Moz, basically, if you go to moz.com slash local, right? If you go to moz.com slash local, from there, you can see this is how Moz looks like. You can click on, have one to 99 location, you select that option. Then after that, you're gonna click the yellow button, get my free listing score. So what Moz does, it will give you a score based on how many local listing you're in locally in your area, okay? So once you click that, you will basically tap the name of your company, the street address, the zip code, then check. Then of course, Moz will tell you where are you listed, where you're not. And even if you're listed, it will basically give you some information in terms of like how many percentage of the Google My Business page is complete or how many percent of uh, Yelp is complete. So you can go back and fix and adjust and do it by yourself. Does that make sense? Any questions? All right, no questions, y'all are scholars. All right, so here's another uh, $100 tip for you guys, okay? 
is another link right here. Uh, this company called uh, uh, Bright Local. They do have an updated uh, 2021 uh, local citation. So this is basically what it is based on your business. If you're an attorney, if you're a chiropractor, if you're a gym, you can click on that link and you can find specific directories for specific businesses. So this is where some customers, you know, go to these citation site and they look for local businesses through these citation sites. Most of them are free. Some of them are not. Just double check. So it's like a bonus for you guys. I know it says like 2018 here, but if you click on the link, they do have 2021 update on these listing. Okay. Now, what do you need to do or how can you prepare? All right. So I'm assuming, I could be wrong. I'm assuming that maybe most of you don't have the Google My Business page yet. In fact, if some of you do have it, can you go ahead and put in the comment section how many of you have the, uh, uh, what you call it, the, uh, the Google My Listing? Let me see. What is the chat? That's it. I don't see anyone. anybody has the Google My Listing. I have multiple. Okay. Okay. Ali, you do marketing, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, anybody else? Anybody else has the uh, the Google My Business page? Because, it, okay, new business, we have it. Great, Aaron, okay. We do have a Google My Business page. Listen, great, great, great. Okay, Carolyn also has it. Beautiful. Who else? So, Aaron and Caroline, how is it working for you? Are you guys getting any type of leads from it? Uh, getting reviews? Are the account 100% complete? Okay. All right. Yeah, but seems to be hit or miss on people accessing based on device. Yes, because if they can, basically they go to Google, the browser from mobile device and they do a search and if they can find it, they can call you or have you set it up. You can also have messages now. I'm going to also share some of the new, like, nine updates that Google introduced for the uh, Google My Business page, okay? Now, if you, uh, Aaron and Caroline, if you have Google My Business page, you might want to use the Moz. Go to moz.com slash local and see if you are, it can be listed on other listing sites. You have a lot of leads from it. We became a delivery only business last year. So we're hoping to figure out how to change our listing to not show a physical address. Well, there's an option in the settings when you log into the, the Google My Business page. In the address, there's an option you can basically hide it under the info. If you can go there and just hide the address, that's how can you do it. Okay. Yeah. So try to, if you, if both of you have the Google My Listing, great. Make sure it's 100% and focus on. Uh, getting more reviews from your happy clients. And if you have any type of uh, new images, new photos of the business and activities, share those. If you have a website that you blog on a consistent basis, you might want to post those blog posts on the Google My Business page as well, because there's a feature you can post your blog on the Google My Business page, okay? But at the same time, use the Moz and see if you are not listed in some of the top 10 or 20 uh, listing sites, okay? Because the more listing information of your business you have, actually Google can ask, look at that information as well. If you're listed in these popular listing sites, that can be a good thing for your business as well. I have a question in the business icons, but I can wait if you're covering that later or <laughs> wait until it's Business icon, uh, what do you mean, Aaron? I have a question in the business icon. But anyway, yeah, we can finally go at the end. All right, so what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to quickly go through, uh, I'm not going to have the images for the setup, but I'm going to go through uh, when you set up the Google My Business page, you know, for those that probably don't have it, quickly what they need to do, okay? So let's see, let's go ahead and go back to the view. All right. Okay, so what you need to do, first thing first, because I did mention the moz.com slash local, because of that, if you have like a work document or a notepad make sure that consistency is everything so what do i mean by that if you write your business with the capital uh letter on the first word second word and third word of your business make sure that's how you're going to write it everywhere else so if you're going to if you're going to create a yelp super pages nokia all the other mobile listing 
it has to be exactly the same. Believe it or not, some of these systems, if they look at lower cases versus upper cases, they might think it's a different address, right? So make sure that you are consistent in everything in most, in most terms, right? So name of your business has to be consistent. Uh, don't add, uh, recently Google made a change that you cannot add keyword within your name. So if you're, a, let's say, a chiropractor and, and your name is a ninja chiropractor, you cannot say ninja chiropractor 24 seven, you know, five days a week, whatever, right? You can't do that because they can actually flag you. Just the name of the business, okay? And it should be everywhere. So whatever you're going to list it, make sure the business name is exactly the same. The business description, same thing. Describe the business, even though right now with Google My Business page, the kind of keyword doesn't work, but I still recommend that you should be in the habit of using keywords. Like if you're, again, if you're a dentist, I'm going to say, you know, the best San Antonio dentist by Ninja Dentist, okay? That's the end of the business, okay? So business description, make a copy of that all the contact information, right? The contact information, whether it's a phone number, email, all the social channels, uh, make sure what kind of, of uh, type of uh, types of uh, payment do you take? Credit, American Express, cash and whatnot. Uh, nowadays we have Cash App and Vidmo and all the other crazy ways of taking payments. Make sure the hours operations are correct. If you have uh, images and videos, make sure those are authentic and real and not stock photos, okay? Not stock photos because your customer wants to know who you are. And also Google wants to know that you're sharing like real images and not stock photos. Now, the only time you can share something like creative, if you have like an image with the, uh, what do you call it? Like a tip or ideas, like you can, like a Canva kind of thing, then you can share those. But mainly they also wanna see the behind the scene, what other tasks you're doing or videos, okay? Uh, business categories, that's very important because if a category is incorrect, you can actually uh, not show the result for the customer that's looking for you. Map, Google Map is another thing. Make sure that, that even though you get the red dot, that doesn't mean it's 100% correct. So make sure you zoom out or zoom in, make sure the address is correct. If it's not, fix that as well, because people do use Google uh, Map to look for businesses as well, not just Google search, okay? And of course, reviews. The, the happier customer you have, you can just ask them, hey, you know, look us up or here's the link. Give us some uh, positive review, reviews. We'll highly appreciate it. If you have all the social media links, make sure you post those, okay? Then any email addresses, fax numbers, who uses fax numbers these days? I don't know, maybe real estate agents, you know, for a lot of documents, <laughs> okay? If you have a second number, you can share all that. So make sure you, this is how you prepare in a work document completely. Why? Because when you go to all the other listing, you're just gonna copy and paste. The only difference you're gonna find in other listings, maybe the category is different or maybe uh, like Google takes 10 page, uh, 10 images minimum. Other sites probably will take four or five. There's going to be like a minor difference, okay? So make sure of that. Uh, so when you, for those, you have to have a Gmail account. When you go to the Google My Business page, just go to google.com slash business. This is what you're going to see, okay? If, if you're going to sign up for the first time, okay? Uh, before I'm going to show you what's going to be there, let me just kind of quickly say why why Google My Business page is important and why it's different than the rest of the other local listing side. Because if you look at Yelp, for, unfortunately, they're not free. I mean, they have a free version, but then again, if you get a lot of positive reviews and negative reviews, what they do, they're gonna start to charge you a couple hundred bucks a month. And what they're gonna do, if you don't go with their monthly payment, then they're gonna bring the negative reviews up. So be careful, okay? But Google itself, Google My Business page is completely 100% free, okay? So it's very important because it's one of the fastest way for your customer to find you in Google search. It's also one of the fastest way for you to be found on Google Maps. Uh, it is a geolocation-based service. And if you have a Gmail account, by default, you, have, you can just create the business page. And also, 45% of the Google searches are for local information. So whoever goes to Google, like right now, to search for anything, 40% of them actually look for local businesses, local stores, local whatever local. So that's still a lot. I mean, 40% is not less, you know what I mean? And of course you can have your happy customers uh, get your reviews because when people click on those names, they can see that these are actual people and they're not fake unless somebody just made a fake account, okay? Uh, and, if, and one of the coolest thing that, uh, or one of the update that uh, Google introduced to the Google My Business page, they enhance their analytics. So it will show you how many visitor saw your, uh, what you call it, the Google My Business page. It will tell you how many saw 
the Google, uh, through the, uh, what do you call it? The Google knowledge panel. The knowledge panel is that when you do a search for business and it pops on the right corner with the image and map and address, that's called Google knowledge uh, panel, okay? And it will show you if the traffic came from Google, uh, what do you call it, par, uh, pack. So the Google pack, you know, sometimes when you do a search, uh, let's say for a spa, you get, you get the ads, then you get the addresses, a bunch of other other local, uh, what do you call it, Google My Business page and stack of each other, um, like one, two, three, four. This is called the Google pack. So it will tell you that if you showed up from the pack itself, or from the knowledge panel or just from the link itself, okay? So the, the analytics will give you more information. That's why it's, uh, I think it's very, very important, okay? Now, once you sign up for the first time, you're gonna basically get this message. It will ask you that, you know, tap the name of the business. If it's there, you can claim it. If not, then you basically have to add it as a fresh and brand new, okay? Once that happens, the first question is going to ask, like, what, what is the name of the business? As I mentioned in the beginning, if the name of the business is one way, just make sure you, you call it that way. Don't cause any confusion. And this also goes with your website. If my business is called Ninja Dentist, then my website is ninjadentist.com. Try to stay consistent throughout the whole online system, even in social media. Do your best that all your social channels are the same, the exact same name, because your audience are not going to get confused, okay? It's good for branding and it's also good for your target audience to kind of easily find you quickly, okay? The second thing is you gotta choose the, the category, category that fits your business best. Initially it's gonna be like one or two. After that, you can add more. Uh, then of course he will ask you, do you want to add a location customer that can visit? Like if you are a spa a restaurant and and whatnot, you're going to say yes. If you're an electrician, a plumber, or working from home, then you're going to say no. So what's going to happen, it's going to only say San Antonio taxes, but it's not going to show the actual address, okay? Now, there's something have, you might want to think about. It. It's nothing. There's no right and wrong here because you don't want them to come to your location. But sometimes consumers or the target audience, when they don't see the actual address, there's a chance that they might not you know, click on your link, okay? But, but not in most cases, but there might be a possibility. So that's why I recommend that if you work from home, you don't want to use your address, maybe you can sign up or you can look into, I don't know, lunch or save, they offer any kind of service like that. I know Gig Dem and Venture Point, they offer like a business services. So you can use this location to kind of, uh, to see if you can get customers in those areas. I mean, I have some, some of the clients that they live like way in Helotis, but they want to target, let's say Stone Oak area. So they actually rent uh, a physical address in a Stone Oak area so they can be found in that area, okay? That's just a strategy, okay? And now with the recent update, Google doesn't like if you are going to use the business, like virtual business office, they don't like that. So there's kind of a workaround behind that. So we can talk about that later, okay? Uh, where do you serve your customers? If you select different cities, it's gonna show in the map. If it's a specific location, there's gonna be that dot uh, point on the map, okay? What region your business based on, same thing, you can select what you, whatever you provide the services. So you can cover that specific area, okay? All right, so what kind of details do you want to show to the customer? You can have your phone number, you can have your website. If you don't have a website, I don't know, why would you do that? I mean, you should have a website. And in fact, Google offers free site, which actually sucks, okay? I don't recommend that, but hey, understand, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. So if you don't have nothing, you're just starting from scratch, sometimes it's better to have something than nothing, okay? So you can use the Google's uh, free site, whatever. If not, then, Make sure you have your own website because you do want the traffic to basically go to your website. Why? So you can use the website to collect those name and emails and phone number, right? Okay. Once you do that, it's going to ask you to verify. Sometime, uh, in most cases, it will ask you to use the mail. They're going to send you a postcard to your address, which is your business address. Once you get the, uh, the, the postcard, you put the number, you verify it. Uh, I think there's the number sometimes, a number will show up, but that's kind of rare cases. I know a couple of my business colleagues, they do have the phone number. So if anybody wants it, let me know. I'll ask them and see if I can get you guys that phone number so you can verify it quickly within like, you know, just by the time you finish the listing, it's, com it's gonna be completed, right? So once you verify, that's uh, what you need to do. Now, with the new system right now, even though uh, you have the option to request uh, the postcard, you can still continue to complete the profile, but it's not gonna be hundred percent, okay? So the postcard is coming, click continue. Then once you click continue, it will take you to the dashboard. You can add more services, you know, whatever service you offer, uh, you do, you know, we'll give you that option, uh, fix all the hours, uh, add uh, the business description. You have like up to like 70, 50 characters. 
add photos of your work, make, make sure they're good and easy, not something like you took it in the bathroom, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> your business profile has to be ready. Uh, then from the dashboard, you can see the percentage of your profile status, whether it's 50% uh, or 80%. Or 100%. And the best thing is that if you complete 100%, then now you can tell the customer to go ahead and start posting those reviews. Okay. When you log into the dashboard on the left hand side, there's an info. When you go to the info, from there, you will see more options for the address changes or update. You can also select up to like nine categories for your business. And now the, the new thing that they added is called attributes. So under the health and safety, this is where you can say curbside or, you know, you can. Talk about select all the, the COVID guidelines or the CDC guidelines from, from this option. Service option basically means like either online or whatnot, okay? Uh, also, I highly recommend that you add a logo for your business. So the, the pixel side for the logo is like 720 times 720. And for the banner is like uh, 12, I'm sorry, 1024 to 576. So those are the dimension. Make sure you upload those so your profile can be complete, okay? All right, so let's talk about, any more questions before I talk about some of the updates? All right, we're good. You're all genius. So some of the updates uh, this year within the Google My Business page is the first one we talked about the health and safety attribute, okay? So once you go to the attribute in the dashboard from the info, it gives you these options, like, you know, appointment required, uh, a mask required, staff gets temperature checked or staff wear mask and all the other stuff you can apply it. So consumer or customer that wants to care about this stuff, they can look at this information from your Google My Business page, okay? So this is one of the things that they added. And number two, uh, pandemic related attributes for restaurant, if you're in the restaurant business, you know? So that basically like, you know, curbside pickup, no contact delivery, dine-in. So a lot of restaurants right now, they're actually utilizing this so this is kind of pretty cool. Number three, attribute for online services. So for example, uh, let's see, online appointment, online estimates, online classes. These sort of the options that they added from the, for the new, or for the new feature. Uh, call logging. Uh, so this is basically what happens when the customer calls you through Google My Business page. Uh, if they missed the call, Google will tell you whether you missed the call or not. So this is a good information for you to kind of track how many calls are get you getting and how many calls you're missing. So you can go back and make some adjustment right there, okay? Additional Google My Business Insight data. So right now, the what do you call it? The analytics got improved. That's what it means. Number six, you can add gift card and donation pages, but you do have to use a third-party companies for that. So when they click on it, it will take them to those uh, pages for donation or gift cards. Messaging, you can set up a messaging right now too. So somebody, if, if, if they don't want to call you, they want to send you a message. You can communicate through your phone, your mobile device, of course, to message with them back and forth. Now, here's the thing. If, some, if, you, if your target audience message you, you have 24 hours to respond, okay? Faster, the faster, the better. If you do not respond within 24 hours, uh, Google My Business page will actually turn off this feature for you, okay? So be very careful. If you're gonna use this messaging system, you, you gotta do your best to respond as soon as you can, but you have like up to 24 hours, okay? Uh, they also added the black owned businesses. So if you're a black owned business, that means if you put that on your business, that's what it tells them only, okay? So here we go. Some of these attributes for the number eight, identified as a black owned or veteran owned or woman led. So if that matters to you, if it matters to your customer, you're gonna go ahead and select those options. Number nine and the last one, maximum size video. So before it used to be like, you were able to upload uh, up to like 100 megabytes, but now you can do it more than, I believe, 75 megabytes, okay? Don't upload more than, in, in terms of size. I mean, the video can be long, depends on how you edit it, but it, it cannot be more than like 75 uh, megabyte in terms of size. Now, when it comes to pictures, my recommendation, less than one megabyte, don't upload a picture that is more than one megabyte, okay? And for that, folks, that's it. You all been approved in use of five. All right, let's talk about some questions and answers here right now. Okay, let's see, how can I turn off this? Can I turn off this uh, sharing? Okay. All right, you there, Ryan? Yeah. 
Let me see if I can. I guess you have to take it over. So don't kick me out. Yeah. There we go. All right. <laughs> okay. What is, is this? Okay. All right. Okay. So let's go with the questions. Let's see if anybody has any questions here. Come on, I, don't, yeah, I don't know if you wanted to address the question regarding the business icons that came yeah. up earlier. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, let's see, where did it go? Uh, I have a question in the business icons, but I can wait if you are covering that later or wait until you finish. Business icon, what do you mean? Aaron, is there a way to share YouTube videos? I mean, from YouTube, there is no way when you go to YouTube itself under the share button, there is no option for Google My Business page, but what, what you can do, you can copy the link. So in the YouTube video, one of the options of the social is just copy the link. Just copy the link and go ahead and post it under the post option of the Google My Business page. That's what I would do, okay? And uh, that was the question from Ali, but Aaron, uh, explain to me what do you mean by business icons? Ali, you have a question? I can, I can hear you, bro. Ali's chilling there. We got an international audience right here. Ali, for some reason we can't hear you, man. I think you're on mute, my buddy. You are on mute. Is he on mute? He looks like he's off mute, but I'm not sure why he's not coming through. Yeah. So anybody else has a question? Carolyn, Aaron, Chelsea, Crystal in the house. Yeah, man, use the chat. <laughs> Andy, Rosalie, anybody, questions? We got like, what, another probably 30 minutes for questions. So feel free to ask now. It's like a free consultation. You have, uh, does posting on Google My Business with specific keyword per post help in visibility? Excellent question. Not necessarily because the way you have to do it, you got to keep it very, very natural. So let's say you have a blog, right? Ali, you have a blog. You, go, you are going to go to your Google My Business page and put a small short snippet, you know, let's say this topic is about X, Y, and Z and just put the link, right? And share it from there. What's gonna happen, you, excuse me, your viewers that's gonna find the business page, of course, they're gonna go through the viewers, you know, the viewer section. They're gonna also see, okay, what other things you have? If it's images, it will show that. If it's posts, it will actually show the visitor there's a new post, new title. Remember, when it comes to content attraction, you got to make sure the title is interesting for them to click on it, right? And make sure that that blog post or the content is followed by some good attracting images that is relevant to the subject itself, right? So that's one option. The second option, you can actually write the whole content specifically just right there. So instead of sharing the post on the Google My Business page, you can just kind of a, a 300 paragraph talk about some tips and ideas and just put it there and see if the audience can react to it right there, okay? Because the concept of uh, keyword only, that's something like Google's with the Google's update. I mean, they're all good right now with the AI rank brain and all these new stuff that's coming up. They, the, 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 uh, the artificial intelligence, the, the rank brain, especially the AI rank brain, tries to understand what you're trying to mean by certain information, right? Especially the question-based information. So right now you have, in 2012, when we were introduced with Google Voice, now we have Alexa, Google Home, and all the other voice system. So if you ask a question, the search engine really understand what you're asking for. So it's, it's kind of getting so advanced. So if you think, of course, keywords are important, but try to always think from the perspective of 
okay, I'm providing a service, I'm providing a product. What is my customer looking for, right? What are they searching? That's why I also recommend, I'm gonna share this thing with you guys. It's called um, Answer the Public, right? If you go to Answer the Public, let me post it in the comment section for the chat section for you guys. If you go to the Answer the Public, so what Answer the Public is, it's, it's a service, they have a free option too. It is attached to Google's uh, related question uh, section of the Google search. And it basically gives you the most popular question based on a topic. So if you talk about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or spa or yoga or dentist or consulting, it will give you all these popular questions that your target audience are asking within Google, right? So now these questions, if you click on it, it will take it to Google, then it will show you what kind of results are showing up, which is amazing. This will help you to come up either with content for your own blog, your podcast, your YouTube videos, right? Or you can use some of this content as a third party information and share them on your social channels. Make sense? But it's a very great resource for like, you know, market research and understanding what our target audience are, are looking for. I've just registered a, a non-resident company in Wyoming. What is the best way to use Google My Business as you told earlier, Google is having some problem with virtual office companies. Yes, so the thing with the virtual office, they don't want you to use virtual offices at all, right? I mean, it was very possible a couple of years ago. I used to recommend that if you get a, a UPS store or if you go to one of these local uh, you know, co-working spots and just kind of print the address, you can use that, right? Uh, but the question is, how would they know, right? So if you have a good relationship with the co-working spot, so what they do, for example, some co-working, Let's say they have a specific address with the number 500. That's, let's say, let's, let's say downtown, uh, I don't know, the Houston Street, uh, number 500. You have a building there and you do co-working with like 100 staff, for example. They have an offices, but they also have like a co-working space. So the workaround behind this, okay, I know I'm gonna get in trouble, <laughs> okay? The workaround behind this is that if the co-working space can give you a specific number. So let's say if we have 200 staff or 200 members, it can be like 101, 102. So that's going to be Houston Street number 500 dash 101 or dash 102. So that is the option. That is the workaround. Okay. When they find out, they're probably going to change the rules. <laughs> if you do this, that's that's how I, I, I recommend for some, because some customers, they want to sell the product a spe specific location. Right. And they do get a physical address or if they want to get the virtual, then this is the option that they might have. OK, to basically ask the business, basically the co-working space or the, the the companies that offer spaces and conference room and co-working. If they offer it, they you can go with them, you know, then they can do that. So it's really up to them, not up to you. OK, and the second option, you can just hide the address and just keep Wyoming and that's it, but not the whole full address. You know what I mean? Especially if you're not going to receive. Uh, the customer to your location. Like for example, a barbershop, they want the customer to go there. So they're going to have to have that information open, the spa, the yoga, the gym, the restaurant. But some uh, some businesses like in, in plumbing, I know how, I know a couple of amazing plumbers here in town. Some of them, they have an office, but even then they don't want to see the customer in the office. So they just select the city and that's about it. You know what I mean? So that was an excellent question. Any tips for uh, ranking your listing high up? Uh, does uh, uh, backlinking wor uh, working works? Well, backlinking, that's for the website. Backlinking works because again, backlinking is part of the off page SEO strategy. It works on the website for the organic uh, strategy, but not for the listing. For the listing, what you need to look for is that more reviews, the more reviews, the better. The images you're gonna upload, uh, the content that you're going to post, whether it's video or blog post, basically, if you keep your Google My Business page up to date, if, if things happen, let's say if you're on vacation, if, if, there's, if there's a new season coming in, if you just constantly update it and utilize it, like a so, in a way, like a social media, it can actually help. Make sense? And always tell your happy customer to leave a review because statistically, 95% of the happy clients don't leave a review. Only the bad one, <laughs> right? So if you remind them, hey, can you leave us a review? We will appreciate it. And what you can do sometimes, I do this with my clients, is that if they have like, you know, 4.5 or 5 stars or 4.9 uh, uh, rating on the Google uh, My Business page, what we do, we basically make another 
graphic image on their website that says 4.9 Google reviews. So when customer clicks on it from the website, it takes them back to the review page so they can add their own reviews as well, okay? So links and embeds are not an option for GMB. No, because the Google My Listing only have your, your banner, your logo, your address, your phone number, your website, messaging if you want, because the way the customer behave when they see the Google My Business page, I want to come to your location or I want to see the reviews. Those are the main two things that most customers do when they find your business in the Google My Business page. They look at the reviews or they want to find out how can they get to you. If it's a restaurant, they look at the menu, right? If it's a phone call, they want to look at the phone, the website. So, that's most, most, most of their behaviors, right? Website depends. If you're a local company, a local clothing store, right? But you also sell online, then for sure they can look at the link, right? The website option on the, on the Google My Business page. Make sense? Is Google My Business page, we need to focus on other dark listing other than reviews. No, the other dark listing, let's say, if you are going to use Yelp, Yellow Pages, uh, actually, there are like more than 200. If you go to SEMrush, SEMrush can pull up to like 50. Yax has like 100. So all these listings, that means some of your clients do exist on those listings, right? But the strategy is the same. What is the idea of the listing when it's like a geolocation base? The idea, I'm a customer, I'm looking for you, right? I'm looking for your location. I'm looking to call you. I'm looking for the reviews. I'm looking for the address. Then maybe the website. That's the behavior of the local listing. That's the majority of the stuff that the customer look for when they look when they find local listing sites. So even if you go to Yelp, they look at the reviews, they look at the address, they look at the phone number, right? They look at the images. If you go to super pages, yellow pages, they all follow the same trend, right? So having, let's say you have the Google My Business page, great, 100% complete. Now you have Facebook business page, okay? Now you have other listing and from other listing, you might get some customers from there, right? Because you don't want to th throw everything in one basket, correct? So the more listing you have, the better. And the good thing about, the two good things, when Google finds out that you are kind of somewhere else, that's like a, a signal that you're popular, right? But for Alexa, because Yaxt partnered with Alexa, one of the features of the Google Home and the Alexa services is that if you have enough local listing, there's a chance that when somebody talk to Alexa, hey, what is the best chiropractor? And Alexa might basically show those information because you have more than one listing. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, Ali? Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, folks, any more questions? Come on. I know you're dying of questions. Yusuf, I have a question. Okay. Uh, so if you're starting out, um, is there sort of a priority list in terms of maybe what services to focus on or just building your, like when you're building your online presence, is there sort of a, you know, do your social media first or do your website first or get your business listing first? Or, I mean, I guess what, what do you recommend? That is an excellent question. I usually, now, even though one of the good news about the Google My Business page is that technically you don't have to have a site because <clears throat> they can offer it for you, right? So it depends on the nature of the business. If you are a person who work from home or consulting or don't want to have the customer visit you, then Google My Business page might not be, uh, it's, it's not, it's not, it's, I'm not saying it's not important, it is, but it might, might not be the priority, right? So I personally recommend for any business, for any business, that you should have your own website first. Now, why is that? Because your website is real estate. Your website, that is something you own, right? The social media channels, the Google My Business page, the YouTube and all the other platform, you do not own them. So if they decided to shut you down for whatever reason, because of complaint or whatever the, you know, the case may be, you're gonna lose it, right? But if you have your own website, you basically purchase your own domain, you basically you know, pay for your own hosting, that is something like your own real estate, right? So I would start with that, okay? But even before starting with the website, I would say, do your market research. Understand what are you providing? Who are you providing it for? And where do your customer hang out? What do they do? Because right now we know that almost 90% go to Google to look for anything, 
whether uh, almost 40 percent going to look for local business so if you're a local business so you, you need to have some sort of local presence right and if you're one if you're a one man person right of course there are like a hundred ways of doing things pick the one that you can handle it so if we said something that you feel like i can start with this go for it if you think oh my business page it's something i can do it quickly go for it right then the social then so forth because what happened is that if you try to do everything by yourself, of course, you're going to get overwhelmed, right? You're going to get confused. And now you're going to end up working for these tools and not running the business. Does that make sense? So my personal recommendation always that if you can start with the website, because that's your real estate, this is where people can actually uh, look you up, read the information. Then from there, of course, slowly set up the social, set up the local listing and focus on things on how to attract my customer. For example, I get some clients that want, you know, 20, 40 phone calls a month, right? And they want it fast. So I don't provide them SEO services. I don't even provide them with the social services, a social media service. Why? Because their objective, they want that phone call. So what I do, we do the market research in Bing and Google and, and, and Facebook and all the other social channels to see how their uh, target audience are behaving and how the competitors are using. Then we come with an estimate and based on what they want, we see how much the ad platform gonna charge for these clicks. Then we offer our estimate and we we'll go from there and try it for a month and two and see if they're going to reach their goal, right? But some businesses, like a startup businesses, they have like a three-year plan. They're not rushing it. They don't care about getting customers within a year. Fine. With those, we say, okay, build the site, do the organic strategy, do the brand awareness through social, build it up until you get the audience. Then from there, you can just, you know, go to the tipping point, right? But for now, through Lunch SA, for, through lunch, I say I would say to all the members, because you're a local, right, and and because you want to target the local audience, and the Google My Business page is free, take care of that first, okay. Even though you might have a website, at least take care of that, move it out of the way, okay. Then go back and focus on the website. Then go down to the social, then other stuff. Because if you want to learn SEO, that's a whole different beast. It takes a lot of work, right? All these information are very important. But strategically and, and realistically, you got to start with something that can, yeah, will not waste too much of your time doing it so you can focus on the business, right? And I, I think, Ryan, you said that uh, the Lunch SA having some sort of volunteers that can actually help the local business to set up the Google My Business page. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We, we are uh, helping people that if you, if you do need support and walking through it, we can help you walk through it and make sure that you're setting up correctly. Beautiful. This is a, like a gold mine. I mean, what other uh, excuse the small business is going to have to say, <laughs> right? Because you guys are offering right now. They need to really, uh, you guys need to market it heavily and they need to kind of get into real quick. Okay. Because when, when they set up the local listing, you, you might get a phone call. You might get something, you know what I mean? Even if they don't have the money or a budget to build a site, uh, the Google My Business page has like a, a very kind of basic way of building a site with the weird link that usually you cannot share. It's just within the Google My Business page. Have them do that too. You know what I mean? So, so that's that's what I would recommend. Okay. How, how about I answer your question? You did. I think there's a comment in the. Let's see. One of my friend only has a Facebook page in Google My Business. His website is not live yet, but he is getting leads already. Great. If he's getting, perfect. You know, that's awesome. I know some clients, I've known some clients for 15 years. They don't even have a website. <laughs> okay. They're still getting customers. So, hey, you got to stick with what works, right? But to tell your friend, if he's getting leads, which means customers and doing very well, awesome. That means what? Do not neglect the site. Yeah, you're making profit, you're getting customer, you have an extra cash, right? Like 50% of your money should go to marketing. Okay, now build the site because you got to improve. Make sense? And of course, when you build the site, you don't want to build it just for the sake of brochure or for the look. You're building it with a strategy, right? And the strategy is, okay, if I'm getting leads from Facebook in the Google My Business page and I'm converting them, okay, I'm going to add something else. I'm going to add the website so I can also get leads from the website. Make sense? So you're basically trying to get not from one basket, but from different baskets. That, that's what I would recommend. Because if you, were, if you were struggling, I would say, yeah, stick to Facebook and, and, and Google right now. And the money that he's making, uh, he, he did not make even enough. Okay, have them continue until they, they're in a profit mode, then have them uh, build a site. Because at the same time, you don't want to have them build a site and not get the result from the site. Make sense? 
All right. Uh, who is the <laughs> Rocky? What's going on, my man? Who is this crazy guy? Uh, of course, I'm the only crazy one in town. Uh, Rocky in the house. Uh, Aaron, how, how do quantity quality of Google reviews affect your online presence? That's a very, very good question. So uh, Google's review is a little bit tricky because what happens if you look at, let's say we're going to type a spot in Google and you're going to see all this result under the Google pack, right? You will see the first one for some reason has five reviews and you have like probably hundred and why are you on the second and they're on the first, right? So sometimes what Google does, it looks at the location of the map, right? So whatever I'm calling from or searching from, it will give me the closest result based on the map. Sense. And with, unfortunately, sometimes you, can, you will get confused. I'm like, if I have 100 reviews, why come, how come this person on top of me? So that means it could be something else that causing that, that page to be up, whether it's a quality site or a post or a link or they've been posted somewhere else. There could be other factors because within the Google you know, search engines algorithm, there's more than 200. That's what they say. I think it's like more than 1,000, right? So what I would do, if you see stuff like that, don't let that bother you. Just focus on the quality of your page. So consistently uh, find out ways how to get your customers to send more reviews. So if you're sending packages or uh, if you have an office on the door that says Google My Business page, find out creative ways of how to keep them engaging to go back and review more. Make sense? So I would, I would try different ways to, to basically do that. Okay? Because what happens sometimes, yeah, this is one of my barbershop clients had an issue where he hired somebody that he did not know that that person didn't have a, a, a what do you call it, uh, a license with the proper expiration. When he found out that it was why he never renew and kind of lied to him, he let that person go. And that same person went to Google and left a negative review, like zero. And, and we knew that he wasn't a customer, it was just somebody that worked in uh you know uh, for, for him and of course his review dropped but luckily because my team have access to the google team so basically explained to them and we had the client talk to them that look this this guy was a disgruntled ex-employee is another customer and guess what google actually removed that review and now his uh, review went up okay and in fact a lot of his customer is coming from because of uh, when he when his review increased his ranking also got better in fact he got you know more more calls and whatnot <clears throat> Come on, folks. We have a lot of time for questions. Can public figures, personal brands have Google listing? Is this possible? Well, I mean, if they want to, if they have an office, right? Because the whole idea, remember, Ali, the whole objective of Google listing is geolocation, right? One of the reasons that Google removed or kind of shying away from the virtual office because they want to make sure that these are not spammers, right? They want to make sure that you're actually entering something like here. This is like my office here, right? So they want to make sure that you're actual local small business, right? So if a person wants to have that, just needs to have an office. That's it. If they do have an office, they sit there. They can they can set up one. Come on, folks. I know you all have questions. I can I can feel it in your head. You got like. 30 more minutes. Don't waste your time. Keep asking. Yeah, and remember, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Yes. <laughs> right? So, uh, Aaron said, what do you recommend for photos and videos? When it comes to photos, uh, like I said, the quality has to be good. And again, it depends on your business, Aaron. If you can tell me what, what is your business, I can give you some ideas. When it comes to videos, it can be a testimony. It can be behind the scene. Like, for example, restaurant, they can show how they cook, you know, for example, like a quick thing. Uh, even food trucks, you know, some food truck, they have like a specific location that they always stay on, like never move or like, a, you know, I, I know a couple of food trucks here. I, I don't want to call them food truck because they just basically come to the stop and they shoot a lot of behind the scene cool stuff. So uh, if you're in a roofing company, you show before and after, right? If you do like, um, what do you call it? Like carpet cleaning before and after videos, anything that looks ugly, then looks awesome. Even for, uh, what's his name? Uh, Rocky here, he does, uh, he does like what a car, uh, 
striping, putting like stripe on the cars. You can do like before and after videos, stuff like that. Some of the customers they see like, wow, this is amazing. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Uh, retail entertainment, uh, tactical, oh, nice. Oh, pff, dude, that's beautiful. Tactical laser. You have some <laughs> stuff posted, but not a lot. Yeah, so that that's something like um, you can you can show how to videos. You can show some funny videos that, I mean, it depends on your staff and the team. You guys can do some fun stuff. Don't make it too cheesy and corny, <laughs> but you never know. Those things can go viral too, right? I know actually a friend of mine who works at uh, Bargain Depot. So him and a couple of his buddies, they just do like a live streaming and just go like very funny, crazy. And they get customers like, you know, insane, right? So try to be creative, but also think of from the perspective of how can I use this video to educate and benefit my customers. For example, if you find out through talking to a lot of clients, if you find out that there's a do's and don'ts that they need to be educated on, so you can do videos like that. Make sense? Because now that video can also be on your YouTube channel. You know, it's like hitting two birds with one stone, right? You can have it on YouTube channel. You can also have it on the Go My Business page, stuff like that. Something like uh, that, that when you see that the audience are kind of clicking and viewing more and more, you just stay consistent, don't stop. Stay consistent because sometimes, yes, you might get tired if you don't see results, but stay consistent. Look at the analytics. Let the analytics help you to make sure that those posts are working because if it doesn't, you don't want to be like the gerbil just kind of going over and over to expect different results, right? So the consistency and the balance and the strategy all come together. If you look at the data, if you look at the number, use the number, use the data for you to make that decision to continue uh, putting those videos and whatnot. Uh, do we need to keep posting on Google My Business page, like social media? Well, if it's beneficial, why not? If, if you believe it's going to benefit your target audience and people can find it from there, the target audience can find it from there, why not post it, right? Because this is the era where we kind of say that information overload, but you also understand in the beginning when Ryan talked about online presence. So what is the concept of online presence? If somebody just type your name or type, or type the name of your business, and all this information show up, whether it's video, social, content, that actually builds credibility, right? And not just that, when they see the content and the content is amazing, oh, that's even better, right? Because you don't wanna be a person just, just, that, that just posts content for the sake of content. If it's garbage, you don't wanna do that. That can harm your business actually, right? But you're putting amazing stuff. And that way, eventually, when people see it, when the target audience see it, they're gonna share it and it's gonna grow. A lot of successful businesses in the beginning They've been doing it for quite some time, let's say for a year or so. And now once they hit that tipping point and everything is like a snowball effect, right? So stay consistent, but also be strategically consistent, right? Don't do it for the sake of consistency only. Because I've seen some of the folks that they just put stuff like for the sake of putting. No, I didn't say that. Yes, you put stuff, but there has to be strategy behind it. Like why I'm posting this video? Ask yourself this question. Why I'm posting this image? Why I'm posting this uh, a blog post? What I am trying to achieve from this, does this blog post has a, a landing page or a call to action in the middle for a phone call or, or get a coupon or, or invite your friend for that, let's say the laser tag, right? So whatever you do, right, has to be strategic, not just for the sake of dumping content, right? Don't do that. Come with the strategy, come with the plan. Anything I post, even if it's an image, there's a reason behind it. Why did I post that image and what? do I want to achieve from it? If I did not achieve it within a week, okay, plan B, let's go and try another strategy. Make sense? <clears throat> okay, any more questions, folks? Come on. And if you all want me to if you want, you can message me and um, look me up in Facebook. Send me your Google My Business Google My Business page or link. Let me look at it. I can give you feedback. I can tell you, okay, uh, what area needs to be improved, or if it's good or not, if it's useful, I'd approve, okay? If it's not, then I'll, I'll give you some ideas, okay, what area you need to focus on uh, or improve it. So that way, it hopefully can help you to, you know, with your business as well, okay? And don't forget, the Mars.com slash local is only for US. I don't think it's for UK International, but uh, Local IQ and SEMrush and Yax, I think they're still in the US only. So try to utilize those as well because your objective of utilizing those local listings is what? To get more customers. That's what you're doing it for, okay? 
Uh, some of them are free, some of them are paid. Don't go with the paid one, stick with the free one. Uh, by amazing content, do you mean this? <laughs> what do you, you just share the YouTube video here. I'm gonna probably see the, the video later, my friend. Okay, guys, one more uh, call if you have any more questions. Going once, going twice. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Yusuf. I really appreciate it. Um, as always, I think that you bring an energy and uh, a candor that really is insightful and helpful to people. I'm really happy and thankful to have you as always, and uh, hope to have you back in the future. Um, and I appreciate it. Uh, we will continue tomorrow with the uh, rest of our sessions. So please join us tomorrow if you're interested. Sure. And uh, we will be posting this later for those of you that would like to catch any part of the session you missed or just like to review it again. So thank you, Yusuf. You're welcome, guys. Thank you, Ryan.